Well, I was just going to do this fix myself, and I decided I'd make a down and dirty video to show uh, those of you out there that have broken the LED connector off of your 3090 or 3080 FE graphics cards, that's Founder Edition graphics cards, uh, how to repair it. So first, what happens, as you probably already know if you're watching this video, is this connector over here on the PCB. Uh, you go to lift up the wire and to get it out of the connector and the whole socket just pulls off the board. So you wind up with a bare connector there and nothing to connect your LED connector to. Now, it's not the end of the world. It won't affect the performance of the card, but if you're like me, um, I like my cards to work 100% including the LED. So um, I looked around and I was able to find the actual socket replacement. It's not the one with the metal slider like you had originally. I think that's an NVIDIA proprietary part, uh, but there is a standard connector you can get that will work just as good and the pin alignment is perfect. Uh, you'll notice on the connector of the wire, hopefully you can see, I'm using a GoPro for this, but on your LED connector there is two wires obviously and on the bottom there is basically like two micro blade connectors and in the socket replacement you'll get and I'll link this socket here in the description you'll see there's two little blades inside of it and essentially this just seats down in there right it doesn't need to slide it just kind of seats down in it now those two blade connector pins you see here if I take this socket and put it where it belongs those two pins align perfectly with the two pads that provide power to the led on the graphics card you've got one two three four pads those aren't for you in front of the four you have two one two larger pads those are the polarity pads for the led which need to get soldered to this guy which then will connect this and seat it back in like it was originally. I think the best way to do this is to first snap the cable into the socket before it's even soldered, then use adhesive to hold it to align those two pins. I am going to use the smallest bit of glue. I'm going to apply the glue, not where there's traces or pads in case it ever rips off i'm going to put the glue back here in my case just a tiny tiny drop and i'm going to align the one two pins with the one two pads uh, face down the only way it can go obviously put some tape over it and we'll solder so let's do that now so now we have our glue on another surface we're going to bring it over to our working area i'm using a cut q-tip as a little brush so i can get exactly the amount of adhesive i want and put it exactly where I want, which is in the back of this connector behind the electrical pads. And now we will apply this where it belongs, taking care to align those two pins because that's the important part. Been about 30 seconds, you can see it's very nicely secured into place. The wire is already in the socket, so we don't need to physically move that around later and potentially rip it off again. Now we just have to solder those two pads. All right, here we are ready to solder. Now before you even heat up your soldering iron, well, first of all, you should be using a solder iron of say 15 watts, or if you have an adjustable, just set it pretty low. Before you even heat up the iron, just practice and make sure your tip is sharp enough. You know exactly where you're gonna hit. Practice real quick. Okay, we're good. So I'm going to heat up my iron now. While we're doing that, I'll need some flux. I'm going to break out the old school Radio Shack flux, but just take a tiny bit. Depends on the kind of flux you have, obviously, gel or liquid, but I'm going to put it on just those two pins, just the tiniest bit. All right? That's all we're focusing on, just those two pins. That's all we need super tiny all right as you can see i have magnification and so i can see what the heck i'm doing harder for you to see on video because it's pretty small stuff but just get a little bit of solder on the tip of your iron and you just want it just starting to melt right because we're using such a little amount and then just get in there and hit that spot we just fluxed and that one is good now Make sure you don't short out any of these four guys in front of it. You can inspect it afterwards as well. 
And there, the two pins are done. Make sure you go back and double check you didn't short those four pads in the front because they're easy to hit by accident when you're soldering. Now at this juncture, now that we've completed the solder work, you want to clean this area up with alcohol, 91%. Uh, and you can either plug it into your computer without putting the back plate back on, just power it on real quick, make sure the LED turns on. If it does, turn it off. RAM's not going to get hot that quickly to cause any damage. Or you can use your multimeter and put it into continuity mode and uh, probe around and make sure that your connections are sound. Ooh, ooh. Seems good to me. All right, guess we're good. So now I'm going to thermal pad this guy back up with G-Lit Extremes, by the way, on the back plate on the 3090. If it's a 3090 you're working on, I recommend 2 millimeter pads, not 1.5 like a lot of people do. Here's our repair. I put another layer of tape over it just for extra security and to remind me that this 3090 is a repaired card, so I'm more careful with it next time I take it apart if I ever need to take it apart again. Um, this is my thermal pad arrangement. Like I said before, I use two millimeter G lit extremes. Um, two millimeter on the back plate makes a lot more sense to me. Also, notice I didn't do the triangle patterns like some other guys out there. I see this is pretty common on YouTube. They like to do this. All right, and that's just such a waste of thermal pad. Uh, and I think it's just going to add more surface area in that area, taking away from the tension in the more important area, the RAM. So I've done a lot of EK water blocks on 3090s, and their diagram goes something like this. Over here, where we were just talking about, instead of those big triangles, there's really only three culprits of heat in that area. So I just used three pieces there, not that gigantic, use a whole pad triangle and then make it impossible to push down in that area style uh, that a lot of others do. So uh, just wanted to show you this before I put the back plate on. So now I'm going to finish putting this back together and uh, we'll install it and test it. LED is working great. Temperatures are outstanding with those two millimeter pads. Uh, that's it. Hopefully your LED is repaired and uh, thanks for watching.